Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breeze continuing on with WrestleMania review number two on WrestleMania 7. Uh, this one, of course, is coming from 1991, which is at the height of the Persian Gulf War, which WWF fully exploited to its best. Hulk Hogan going up against the Iraqi sympathizer Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, this um, the feud got kicked off pretty fast. I, I think that uh, more than likely... Uh, Vince McMahon had different uh, opinions about what should go down at WrestleMania, but then seeing how the Iraqi Gulf War kicked off with Saddam Hussein um, really terrorizing the entire world, basically thinking that everything that was going on in the Middle East uh, was going to blow up the rest of the world, uh, I think that more than likely he changed his mind somewhere around January. Um, at WrestleMania 6, you saw Hulk Hogan lose the championship to the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior would carry the championship until Royal Rumble that year, coming in again Against the Sergeant Slaughter, who around Survivor Series just randomly became the number one contender for the title. Uh, he never really won any big matches. He never really, um, he, I don't even think he competed on the Survivor Series show. He just showed up out of the middle of nowhere, uh, declared himself the number one contender, and at Royal Rumble, he had himself a championship match. I made a review about that, how uh, I can remember watching um, you know, the Royal Rumble on Scramble Vision, and when um, Macho Man Randy Savage asked for a title shot and was not granted it by the Ultimate Warrior, which to me is very surprising. You know, that they made Ultimate Warrior look like he was a non-fighting champion. Uh, as a babyface champion, you should be, you know, defending the championship against any and all comers. Um, Sensational Sherry threw herself at um, the Ultimate Warrior, and he turned her and the Macho Man down. And during the match against um, Sergeant Slaughter, the Ultimate Warrior was attacked by Macho Man Randy Savage, who crushed the Royal Scepter that was given to him by Ted DiBiase. Um, and uh, Ultimate Warrior lost the match. I remember watching that on Scramble Vision, just being crushed, not knowing if it was real, that Ultimate Warrior really was not the champion, how the bum Sergeant Slaughter became champion out of the middle of nowhere. Uh, from there, at the end of the Royal Rumble, when it was won by Hulk Hogan, uh, Mean Gene D D B I'm sorry, Mean Gene told Hulk Hogan uh, that in the back, uh, Sergeant Slaughter was defacing the American flag. And right there, on the spot, Hulk Hogan declared himself the number one contender for the championship. I'm guessing that Ultimate Warrior wasn't getting a rematch anywhere. And uh, Hulk Hogan said... Uh, that he would be going after the championship at WrestleMania and he was going to win the title for the American people. Um, Vince McMahon had high hopes on WrestleMania. He had a very big turnout for WrestleMania 6 in Toronto at the Sky Dome. Vince McMahon had booked um, you know, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, uh, the Olympic Coliseum in LA, to be the host of WrestleMania 7. And they've been running commercials for people to buy tickets for well over a year. Somewhere around January to February, um, Vince realized that he hadn't even sold uh, close to half of the tickets in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, and he decided to pull out, and he decided that it was due to um, security reasons due to the war. Uh, he wouldn't want, um, you know, the uh, Iraqi uh, army uh, to come attack WrestleMania since it was uh, one of the biggest sporting events that would be held on that day. So um, it was moved inside uh, to the uh, sports arena, uh, which is uh, very, very close to the uh, Coliseum. If you've been anywhere in L.A., it's it's where the it's close to where uh, the Staples Center is now, um, but uh, not in a great part of town. Um, so basically, uh, you know, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. WrestleMania 7 becomes one of the lowest attended WrestleManias of all time. In my opinion, WrestleMania and WWF really hadn't started to downhill slide. Uh, it probably wouldn't be for another two years till I said they were really on the decline. Uh, the, the, the WrestleMania after this in WrestleMania 8 honestly is, is one of the, my greatest childhood memories. I really, really remember that one. I wouldn't even need to watch that to do a review on it. Uh, I can remember almost every match in every order that they happen, and I wouldn't be shocked if I watched that show at all. Uh, in this one, uh, it opens up. This, of course, has 14 matches, a lot like WrestleMania um, 6. If, if something like this happened, it, it would make people in the WWF, uh, WWE go crazy if WrestleMania 13... I'm sorry, if WrestleMania 31 had this many matches, um, 
you know, making this many guys matter on the cards. Right now, you know, you have to have a seven-man ladder match as well as a multi-man. Uh, hasn't really been announced how many are going to be in the second annual Memorial Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Um, but uh, to just to make sure everybody gets on the card. It seemed that everybody got onto the card uh, with these 15 matches, including the one dark match. So we'll see. Of course, there's always some short ones. Looks like two matches in, in under two minutes. And so nothing really big there, but at least they got their payday. Uh, the Rockers opened up the show going up against Barbarian and Haku. Honestly, in my, mat, uh, my mind, this was a, a longer match of, of over, over 10 minutes. Uh, the Rockers always brought higher energy, but uh, the Barbarian and the Haku weren't really the best opponents for them. From there, we go to uh, the Texas Tornado beating Dino Bravo. Uh, the British Bulldog beat the Warlord in a very... Um, <laughs> um, many, many people don't remember this match, but a very, very good match, honestly, in my opinion, with the Bulldog beating Warlord. Two really big, strong dudes. I mean, like muscle on top of muscle guys. Guys that really go out there and really beat each other up during the match. Um, you know, both of these guys went out there to see who the stronger guy was. You can look at this match almost like it was a shoot. I'm sure it wasn't, but... Um, Neither one of these guys were going to give the other guy that much during this match. And Bulldog pulls it out and gets the win. From there we go to the Nasty Boys cheating uh, with uh, Jimmy Hart. I believe they hit the Hart Foundation uh, over the head with one of the motorcycle helmets. Which led to the Nasty Boys becoming the tag team champions. From there, don't cry that bad for Brett the Hammond Hart and, and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Uh, they would split ways, both going into single competition. I believe at this time Jim, Nival, uh, Jim Nightheart would go on to become who? And Bret Hart would become on. Uh, they soon become the Intercontinental Champion at uh, SummerSlam, beating uh, Mr. Perfect. Uh, from there, he would build on that to become WWF Champion uh, soon after that. So, Brett really took off after this year's WrestleMania. From there, we go to a very memorable match. Jake the Snake Roberts wrestling against Rick the Monitor Martell. In the payoff for a very awesome feud uh, at this point, I would believe I would be 10 years old. And... Um, uh, the, Rick Martel would come out as the, as the model. He would spray this big cologne uh, called Arrogance. He would shoot it out of what you would see them shoot rad poisoning in during like a, a cartoon. And he would spray this on his way down because he was trying to, uh, you know, make him spell, make him self smell nice as well as the people that were around him. Um, and, uh, there was an accidental spray where Rick the Mar model Martel was trying to make Damien the snake smell better. And, uh, Jake Roberts didn't want him spraying the uh, perfume onto the snake. So he went to grab it. Instead, Rick Martel shot Jake right in the eye, which blinded him. That is why that they have this blindfold match. And, um, I fell for this hook, line and sinker. Um, still a good match when I watch it today. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, nothing really big. You know, the crowd is, is big into this match with Jake trying to point out uh, and get the crowd's responses to see where to go before when he finally hits the big DDT and the place goes bananas. Uh, Undertaker beats uh, Jimmy Snuka. Uh, in uh, in the match there, uh, that, that would be the start of the streak, the first win for Undertaker. Um, Ultimate Warrior beats Randy Savage. Of course, this would be a retirement match for Randy. Uh, he would, of course, wrestle again after this with making sporadic appearances uh, when asking to be uh, reinstated. Um, you can remember the match against Crush at WrestleMania 10. Um, of course, at WrestleMania 9, he would just be a commentator. Uh, at WrestleMania 8, he did come back out of retirement to fight for the uh, championship. I did forget that. So it, was, it wasn't a long-lasting retirement. But it, when you watched it, um, you know, uh, he was starting to get beaten up by Queen Sherry, who is uh, uh, <coughs> his manager at the time. Uh, you know, Miss Elizabeth came running down to make the save. Uh, Savage and Elizabeth were uh, reunited. And from there, uh, we would go on to have a match made in heaven and a match made in hell at the SummerSlam 1991 with Savage asking uh, Miss Elizabeth to marry him. Uh, the Warrior uh, gets the pinfall by just standing over his uh, his fallen opponent and just putting his foot on his chest. Uh, from there, we go to one of the greatest WrestleMania mysteries of all time, Tenru, a guy that was rumored to go into the WWE Hall of Fame this year and said they went with another Japanese talent. Uh, and Kato wrestling against Demolition. Demolition around this time were trying to phase out Axe. Axe was the older version of Demolition. Of course, Smash would go on to become uh, the Repo Man, as, as of course, as many other um, gimmicks along the way. Uh, they brought in Crush uh, to become the new member of Demolition, and he really fit in, painting up his face, and really looked like he fit the part. But... Um, 
you know, Tenru and Kaido, who came over from Japan, uh, they were borrowed talent beating uh, the WWF talent at the time uh, in, a, in a matter of under five minutes. Uh, this feud went nowhere. Tenru and Kaido went nowhere. It didn't make any sense to see what they were doing, and I've, I've always wondered what their plans were with this. Uh, Big Boss Man beats Mr. Perfect. This, of course, was a uh, Intercontinental Championship match, but this match was won via disqualification, so there was no uh, title change. Of course, this was during the feud of Bobby Heenan and the Big Boss Man, uh, with Heenan always throwing wisecracks about Big Boss Man's mama. Earthquake beats Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh, Legion of Doom, in which I believe is their WWF uh, WrestleMania debut, beats Power and Glory. Uh, Power and Glory, Paul Roman, Hercules, um, a really great tag team from this, around this era. They don't get a lot of play because they never won the championship. They were never really billed as being one of the big ones. I can't really even think of them having a big championship uh, match going after the titles, but uh, they always found a way to have good good matches, and they, they fit each other as a tag team. You believed it. Legion of Doom winning this match in just under a minute. Uh, Virgil, uh, with Roddy Roddy Piper with him, beats Ted DiBiase by countout. Of course, the uh, the payoff for this, of course, would be Virgil beating DiBiase at SummerSlam 1991 to become the Million Dollar Champion. Great match there. The Mountie uh, goes up against Tito Santana. Um, you know, the Mountie gets the win, and then in the big main event, you see Hogan going up against Sergeant Slaughter, of course, who has uh, the Iron Sheik, uh, General Adnan, and uh, Colonel Mustafa with him as well. Um, Hogan beats Slaughter. Uh, the crowd goes crazy. Of course, you see the big leg drop. Um, the big... Uh, thing that Hogan sold during this match was basically the rape of the eyes, but Hogan gets bloodied a lot like, you know, a lot of his main events, and it is a very memorable thing. Of course, the Sports Center uh, is decked out with all red, white, and blue. American flags are hanging behind each of the sections. They make their way all the way around the arena. Even though this is one of the smallest WrestleManias of all time due to low attendance and low ticket sales, uh, it's still one of the most memorable to me. Uh, when you think about the, the matches that you see when you're 9 and 10 and thinking that wrestling is, is all there is in the world, uh, you're always going to have great childhood memories about it. That's why I went on a way to make sure I watched WrestleMania 7. Um, you know, when I, when I was a kid and, and the United States won the, uh, I guess they didn't really win the war, but, you know, when the war was over, uh, the Persian Gulf War, I never really thought that we'd still be fighting over there in the Middle East in 2015, so many years later. But uh, that's just the way the world works these days. Uh, so it's crazy. Hogan versus Slaughter, uh, main event, pretty good one. Uh, probably if they made another Hulk Hogan definitive DVD with a great you know, documentary as well as his greatest matches throughout his career, Hogan versus Slaughter would probably make the list and make the cut. So that's why this is on the list. Make sure you watch this one before WrestleMania 31.